Hey guys, uh, so I am super excited that we are going to be dissecting soon and I wanted to go over the paper frog, which we are going to be doing in class. This is just kind of like if you wanted to watch it again or if you're absent that day, uh, this is going to be how you put together the, the paper frog, which is basically kind of like dissecting backwards. Uh, when we dissect, we're going to be taking everything out of the frog and right now we're kind of putting things back into the frog. Uh, and then I wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up of what to expect when we do dissect. I'm gonna be talking about all of this in class, uh, but if you wanna watch this a little early or you um, miss a day or wanna watch it again before we dissect, that would be a really good idea, okay? So let's dive right in. Or should I say hop, ha ha ha. Okay, so this is the giant frog that I have at the front of the room, and I want to just point out a few things here. So um, at the top where we have uh, the head, this is basically the frog laying down on its back. So it's basically showing you its stomach. Uh, we have the top of the uh, jaw is here uh, in yellow, okay? That's this right here. And um, that's uh, basically, they don't really have teeth, um, but you'll feel it a little bit. It's kind of, it's a little rough, but it's, it's hard there. There's an actual jaw there. Uh, and what they'll do is that along with the vomerine teeth, which uh, are shown like little dots here, uh, they will use that to grip. So they're not gonna chew on anything. Uh, they don't have teeth for that purpose, but they do use them for grip. So when they um, catch a bug, a fly or something, uh, they squeeze their jaw around it and that helps uh, keep the bug from escaping. And then you've got, let me erase this, you've got um, these green ovals right here uh, next to the jaw. Those are the eye orbits. So basically what you're looking at is you're looking at the underside of the eye. Uh, right there. Uh, frogs are going to have what's called a nictating lens, which is going to be on the other side. It's kind of like an extra eyelid. Um, it's, a, it's a nictating membrane and it's it kind of acts like goggles. And so they have this membrane that comes out over their eyes that is like an eyelid, but it's see-through and so they can see underwater, but their eye is still protected. Uh, here you've also got a lot of uh, veins and arteries. So remember, all blood is, is the same. It's just either going to have oxygen or not. And so what they're doing here is they're using red to represent oxygenated blood and blue to represent deoxygenated blood. So the blue are the veins. They're on their way back to the heart and the lungs to pick up oxygen. And uh, the red already has oxygen and it's going to be delivering it to uh, different parts of the body. And then also way back here, you have the kidneys. So these are the kidneys right here. And so the kidneys are gonna be actually one of the last things you see. They're really long and flat and they're laying against the frog's back. Uh, and so this is gonna be where um, filtering happens, the filtering of the blood. Uh, and once you remove the kidneys, which if you're really careful, you can actually take them out together, um, you'll actually see the, the frog's spine and you'll be able to feel its uh, spine uh, and all the little vertebrae that are in there. That's of course, if you are making sure that you're on task the whole time and you're not wasting any time, you'll uh, have plenty of time to get all the way to this point uh, and see the very last thing, which will be the, the spine. Okay, so the next thing, uh, we're gonna start adding stuff to our frog and the first thing that we're going to add are going to be the testes. So this paper frog is a male frog and it's got two testes. And unlike humans, these are actually going to be inside of the body and this is going to be what produces a uh, sperm. You've also got fat bodies that are uh, kind of hanging out on the end of this. Uh, so really the testes are right here. And then we've got fat bodies that I'm going to do in yellow uh, here. And so usually when we would get um, bigger frogs, they would be more mature. We were more likely to find eggs in the female and stuff like that, but they would also have a lot of fat bodies um, because they're just, you know, had long lived longer and, and eaten more food and stuff like that. And remember, fat is all about storing energy. Uh, so if you have a um, male frog, you're going to find testes. 
um, if you find if you have a, a female frog you're gonna find oviducts which are gonna look like little crinkly stringy stuff and um, you might have eggs if the you know if the female was um, producing eggs at the time then then you might even find eggs and sometimes they're filling up the whole entire uh, body cavity right here there's just a bunch of eggs and stuff here and so the little squigglies they look like little squiggly lines the little oviducts um, and they're gonna be kind of like a beige's color in this area and sometimes they're all full of eggs the next thing that we're gonna add is gonna be basically the entire uh, digestive system so we're gonna start off with the esophagus which is this green area that you have right here that I'm circling in red so that's basically also called the food tube the food goes from the mouth um, into the esophagus and actually you can even stick um, one of the forceps through the mouth and see where it goes to the esophagus um, just don't tear apart your frog or anything like that then the next thing that I'm gonna circle in green here is the stomach so if you have time at the end after you've gone all the way through the frog and you've gotten the kidneys out and everything and you have filled you out your organ sheet which I'll be talking about in a second uh, you can cut open the the stomach and the easiest way to do it is kind of just to place your stickers kind of carefully inside one of the ends of the stomach and then kind of cut it open like a book and open it and when you open up the stomach you're going to see rugae rugae are these lines on the inside of the stomach or they look like wrinkles and that actually allows for your stomach to stretch so you know how when you've eaten tons of food and you're just like oh but there's dessert and so you still eat that dessert even though you thought you were full more food can still fit in your stomach and that's because of your rugae so thank you rugae um, so they stretch out to make your stomach a little bit bigger so more food will fit inside of there so then next I have uh, the pancreas which is right here which can be actually really difficult to find sometimes uh, but if you think you found it call me over and I'll, I'll double check or I'll help you find it and so it looks like a little stringy thing uh, if you watch some of the uh, videos that I have in the playlist you can see uh, where the uh, the pancreas is they have a really really good visual of pancreas there that we'll watch that in class then um, so the stomach is going to lead to the small intestine which is all of this stringy stuff here so remember the small intestine is longer than the large intestine um, and then in the small intestine you have the spleen so here is the spleen it's red and I'm circling it in red and that's actually part of the um, immune system and it also um, is where red blood cell production happens and it looks like a tiny little stone it's actually kind of hard when you when you feel it and uh, to me it looks like a little pebble okay so that's how you can tell where the the spleen is but you don't you know be careful because sometimes it gets lost uh, in between everything or, or cut by accident and then it's really hard to identify and then we have uh, it, the small intestine leads into the large intestine and the colon and the rectum which is here and then of course everything goes out of the cloaca so you might find some stuff in here also which is basically going to be waste already um, remember that frogs are only going to have one exit uh, which is the cloaca kind of like birds and we talked about how you know bird poop is kind of watery and it's also a little solid and that's because it's kind of number one and number two mixed there and so the same thing is going to be happening with a frog as well So here I have the liver, uh, which is brown, and uh, this is uh, B. This is going to get glued directly on top of the esophagus. So if you notice how the esophagus says B1, you're going to put a little dot of glue on B1, and then put B2 on top of that. Uh, so that's the liver. The liver is really big in uh, the frog it produces a lot of bile which is going to be stored right here in the gallbladder this little green one right here um, and so you're going to have to get the liver out of the way first because it's going to be obstructing your view of pretty much everything the frog's liver is huge it's, it's made of three lobes um, so it's crazy big and then down here at the bottom which is letter C you have the bladder the bladder can be difficult to find uh, so if you don't find this one that's okay 
um, but um, just important that you know that it's there. Um, the gallbladder, let's, sorry, I almost forgot. The gallbladder um, is for storage of bile, which is what the liver produces. And you're gonna have to be really careful to not cut through the, the gallbladder because it's really easy to kind of cut it in half and you end up losing it. Um, it gets mixed up with other stuff, but it looks like a tiny little plastic baggie, an empty plastic baggie, and it's teeny tiny. So it's different from the spleen because the spleen looks like a little stone and this one looks like a little empty plastic baggie, okay? And that's where the bile is stored. And then it's eventually sent to the digestive system to help digest fat. Then we have the lungs. So the lungs is letter D and you're gonna see it right here. So the lungs are really tiny usually and that's because the frog can actually absorb oxygen through its skin. So it uh, doesn't need to have really large lungs kind of like we do, like that's the only way that we get our oxygen. But since a frog gets oxygen through its skin, its uh, lungs don't need to um, be that big. And they're, sometimes they get kind of stuck behind the liver way back in the body, so you might have to dig for them a little bit. Um, but they're going to look like two balloons, like two deflated balloons or kind of spongy deflated balloons, if that makes sense, um, you know, on either side of the um, liver and kind of towards the back. Then we have the heart. You have to be really careful when you make your first incision because sometimes I have seen people cut the heart. They broke the frog's heart in half. And uh, that can be really easily done if you're not cutting through the skin and the muscle very carefully. Uh, you also need to make sure that you cut high enough when you make it that capital I incision uh, because uh, you sometimes people will cut way down here and then they're like, it doesn't have a heart and that's not true it's just that you needed to cut up a little more here and then um, you would actually see the heart uh, there so be careful with the heart sometimes I have seen people cut it in half uh, but it'll be right here basically in between the two lungs then we have the jaw which I'm going to trace over in red so here's the jaw right here, letter F. And the way that you're supposed to uh, glue the jaw is just glue where the letter F is. Put your glue right there, put your glue right there, and then put the jaw on, on top of it. And then you can actually move the jaw and you can flip out the tongue. So unlike us, where our tongue is actually attached at the back of the throat, uh, the frog's tongue is attached at the front of the mouth, like under your teeth kind of imagine if your tongue was attached right there under your uh, next to your bottom teeth and so what they can do is they can flip out their tongue grab you know a fly or you know scoop up a any kind of insect and then they flip it back into their mouth and their tongue pushes it towards the back of their throat uh, and so since they don't have teeth uh, they're not chewing anything up when they swallow stuff they're basically swallowing it pretty whole and when you open up the stomach, you can find whole pieces of bugs, which are really cool uh, to look at. So if you have enough time uh, to open up the stomach, then I suggest you do that. Once you've already gotten everything else done, uh, you can do that. Then finally, we have the nuptial pad, which is over here on the hand. So this is gonna be on the guys, and obviously we already talked about how this is a male frog. Uh, so here, uh, the nuptial pad is actually used for grip during mating. Uh, so basically what happens is the female uh, is lays the egg, right, the eggs, and the male's on top of her and he releases his sperm. And this helps the male grip onto the female. And then hopefully the eggs get fertilized by the sperm. And then the parents are like, peace out. You know, they leave and the eggs hopefully eventually hatch and turn into tadpoles and then turn into uh, baby frogs and so on. And they have lots of eggs. If you see any females with eggs inside of them, you're going to notice that there's tons of eggs. And that's because chances are if these had 
you know, grown to maturity and, you know, if these eggs had turned into frogs, not a lot of them would have actually made it. And so in, in, you know, because they don't take care of their young, they're going to try to have as many as possible so that hopefully a few of them will make it and be able to pass on their genes. Here I have what the incision is going to look like. And I wanted to just talk about this really briefly so you know a little bit of what to expect or what to do. So here I have um, basically what you're going to be cutting. On the frog already, the company that we bought them from already has an incision right here. Okay, it's kind of like started for you already. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to cut up a little bit and then cut down a little bit. And then from there, you want to make sure that you got past the heart. So really, you can't go too far. Um, you want to go up high and then you're going to cut from that incision that you made sideways both ways and then the other way and then so on and so forth. I don't know what happened to my line there. Okay, so that's your capital I. I call it an I incision. That is not the official term or anything, but to me it looks like a capital I. And so it's going to make two little doors for us. And so when we open the skin, we're going to see the muscle underneath. Be careful that you're only cutting through one layer. Uh, so you're going to open the two doors and then you'll see the muscle and you're going to do this all over again, another I incision, but then you're going to be cutting through muscle once you pull back the muscle and pin it down, uh, you'll see all the organs that are inside. So this is what you're going to be using some of your dissecting pins for. So some of the pins will hold down the arms and the legs just so that your frog isn't sliding around in your dissecting pan. And then you're going to have two pins to hold down the skin and the muscle on one side. So you'll pull it back and pin here, and then you'll pull this one back and pin it right there. Okay. So let's talk about what you can expect the big day. You are definitely going to be wearing goggles. So I need you to make sure that you, uh, when you walk in, you're going to pick up all your stuff and basically get dressed. Uh, that includes goggles, an apron, and gloves. Uh, if you don't want to wear gloves, that's fine, but you are going to need to wash your hands afterwards. And if, even if you wore gloves and you still want to wash your hands afterwards, that is also fine. Uh, but make sure that you're, you're wearing those things. Another thing that you should do is tie back your hair um, just because it's going to get in your way while you're doing stuff and you don't want it to get any frog guts on it when you're trying to brush it back or anything like that. So tie your hair back. Not because we're dealing with fire, but just because it's going to make your life easier. It's also better if you're not wearing long sleeves. Uh, if, you, if you're wearing long sleeves, I know it's cold outside. Uh, it's fine, but you're going to be pulling up your sleeves. And sometimes my sleeves get on my nerves because they won't stay up. So I just prefer not to wear uh, long sleeves or I make sure that I roll mine up really, really well. Uh, also, you want to be wearing some good shoes you probably won't have an allergic reaction or anything like that to the preservative chemical that you know comes along with the frogs but just in case it's better to keep it off of your skin and so we don't want anything to fall on the floor um, and hit your foot on the way down or anything like that so it's best to wear good closed toed shoes so let's talk a little bit more about some of the other tools that you're going to be using. You're going to be using a dissecting pan and this is what you're going to be doing the dissection in. So that's this pan that you see these girls uh, using here. Uh, you're also going to be using dissecting pins and they basically look like needles but they're they look like capital T's. So uh, that's going to be what holds the frog down so it's not moving around all over the place while you're trying to cut into it. Uh, it's best when you're stabbing the pins through the frog and then through the rubber latex that's at the bottom of your dissecting pan to go at an angle it just holds a little bit better than stabbing straight through sometimes the pins will pop out if you just put them straight up and down so if you kind of angle them a little bit when you're putting them through the frog and then through the latex bottom of the pan they hold your frog a little bit better You will also have forceps, which are basically tweezers. We've got these plastic forceps 
that way if you don't want to touch the frog you can use the forceps sometimes it's easier just to get your fingers in there and grab stuff and move stuff around other times uh, you might want to use the forceps that, that might make things a little bit easier you're also going to have scissors we will not be using a scalpel it's actually harder to do the dissection with the scalpel so you are, are going to have scissors instead and it's going to make your life a lot easier the organ sheet which you have heard about before this is just a piece of paper where i have the names of the organs on there and a picture and what you're going to do is you are going to be filling it in as you go with the actual organs so as you um open up the frog first you're going to be looking at the the mouth before you even pin it down or cut it open you're going to be looking at the mouth the first thing you're going to do is cut out the tongue uh, from the front you just do a little snip snip and, and then you put the tongue on the uh, organ sheet so you'll see it right here in the front uh, and then as you go as you're finding the organs you're going to be putting them on the organ sheet and then I will be checking it um, to make sure that you have everything that you identified everything correctly and then I will be disposing of it And a couple of things that I wanted to go over was about time management. Again, I already mentioned this once, but just please be careful about how much time you're taking on this. Uh, if you're wasting time being giggly or squealing because you think it's gross, you're not going to be able to do everything. Uh, like open up the stomach at the end and, and stuff like that. So make sure that you're managing your time wisely. And then also I will be giving you extra credit on this assignment because there will be uh, some cleanup that has to be done after school. Um, during the day after, you know, after each period or, or when you're done dissecting and I ask you to start cleaning up, we're basically just going to rinse things. And after school, I need to wash everything with soap and water to make sure it's really clean and stays nice and dry for uh, next year. So if you want to come and help out with that after school, that would be greatly appreciated and I will be offering extra credit for it. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know.